Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. What a weird day this has been. Uh, we were clouded in this morning, kept everything away. Then this afternoon, the heat and humidity built up um, and most of the Piedmont escaped the worst. And then we saw this late evening band forming along the cold front, which is still producing severe weather, by the way, uh, through the mountains and foothills. I'll turn back on the warnings because we currently have a tornado warning in effect for the upstate of South Carolina. Now this is just outside of our area here. Uh, but you'll see basically around Pickens, um, we've had a, a tornadic storm, which is till P or Pickens County till 1015. I will tell you the, the circulation is weakened. The whole line is weakened. Um, and what's fascinating to me meteorologically, the line looks weaker. But when you look at the reflectivity, it looks weak. But when you look at the wind speeds in here, um, there's still been some minor areas of rotation. It's not nearly as strong as it was earlier. Um, but I will tell you, the good news here is most of this energy is beginning to die off and we're starting to see um, the threat for severe weather decrease. But I'd give it another hour here. The tornado watch is technically up until midnight for all of these counties, essentially the long and west of I-77 um, until midnight. But we might see it canceled early. Now, remember uh, my handy dandy graphic to show you the difference between a watch and a warning because we get a lot of confusion with this. The watch means conditions are favorable for conditions uh, to produce a tornado, and a warning would be one has been uh, developed. So there's a good chance it's either going to be canceled early or will be whittled away way before midnight because based on the trend um, in this line of storms, I do expect it to weaken. So let's go back to this line because um, it's been moving over the same areas again and again. If you're in uh, northern Burke and Caldwell County, it's been a rough night. It's been wave after wave of storm, and we've seen a flash flood warning up there until 11 p.m. The storm I'm watching is just south of Marion, so it's affecting McDowell County right now. Um, there is a little bit of weak rotation there. Camp Grimes up there, um, Boy Scout camp there for Charlotte Mecklenburg uh, Boy Scouts, that area right there, some pretty strong winds. Morganton, a little bit of wind. And then Wilkes County, you've seen a couple areas of rotation up there, but it is weakened as well. So that's good news. Now, where the tornado warning was in effect for Pickens, Let's go back to that storm because it's roughly right there. Turn it back on. Um, there's a storm. And I'm going to go back to the velocity data. And I'll show you how this was really tight earlier. We're going to go back in time a little bit here. Um, and look at that couplet. You see that little speck of red there? Um, just west of 6 Mile and north of Old Pickens. That, that, there was a little bit of rotation right there. And then it kind of went away. So... Those storms earlier, I was watching those and I was worried that we might see additional rotation. I'll go back to the loop here because if you go back an hour, let's say, and you see these storms, they looked a lot more impressive. Let's go back two hours just to show you what they looked like two hours ago. So I'll pause this, let's loop it. So you could see the storms were much more vigorous, but they're kind of sitting over the same spot um, again and again. One thing we had this evening, which really helped these storms develop, was the temperature shot up into the low and mid 70s. We're in the low 70s now, wind straight out of the south. So even though it's well after sunset, it is pretty warm and actually pretty muggy. Dew points were in the low to mid 60s. They're falling back a little bit, but that gave us the energy for these storms to keep going. So let's look at the future cast. Um, that line of storms still kind of left over. It's going to weaken slowly by 11 o'clock. This is why I think the watch will be canceled early, to be honest with you. And then by midnight, it kind of falls apart. Um, and then overnight into the morning, the front might get re-energized off to the east. So don't be surprised if you wake up to some showers in area towards Wadesboro, out towards Rockingham, um, going out in the southern pines. Those areas could see some scattered showers um, or storms tomorrow morning. I don't expect them to be severe, but you might wake up to some rain, um, even some clouds around Charlotte. And then it pushes off to the east. And I tell you what. This pattern for the weekend is going to be really, really chilly um, as we're going to see some mountain snow possibly and, yes, even a frost or freeze for most areas. Tornado parameter, here's what's left of that energy. Still some out there, um, but it's waning pretty quickly and almost disintegrates overnight. So all in all, good signs here across the board that our line of storms is weakening. Um, good news for the Piedmont, most of us are going to escape this. We had tornado warnings to the north. The northwest, the west, and the southwest, all basically all directions except for east, um, and then none over us. So we were kind of surrounded today, but escaped most of it. But the mountains and foothills, boy, it's been a rough afternoon. So Hickory, you're pretty much in the clear. I would say you've got maybe another 30 minutes or so um, before it moves through. Um, 
Uh, thanks, Matt. Thanks for all the shout outs. I know I hated cutting in tonight. You know, I got I only got two emails, believe it or not, about cutting into Jeopardy. I expected a lot more. I think most people understand um, how these things work. It's not we don't choose to cut in because we want to. It's just the way it is. Um, Shelby, you're pretty much in the clear. I'd say another hour. I think we're going to see most of this stuff canceled off here, if not within the hour or by an hour. I don't think we'll be at midnight. I think this line of storms is, is weakening so much. I'm not even seeing any cloud to ground lightning. Um, the one thing to keep looking at is the velocity data. You see right around Dartersville there. That's really interesting. There's a little bit of circulation right there right now. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little bit of wind. It's not much circulation. So Shelby, you're right there, um, and that's off to your west, and that's moving in this direction. So I don't think that's going to hit you, so you don't have to worry about that. If I'm in Shelby or Cleveland County, the, the storms I'm watching are down here in the upstate. The one that's near Pickens that was earlier, um, if, if that re-intensifies, that would be one to watch. And you can see that that, that warning is up until um, 10, 15. I'm going to loop it. But even there, those storms are weakening quite a bit. So unless we get some redevelopment, which it's trying to back there, I think most of us are going to be in the clear. Lancaster County, you're pretty much good. Denver, keep an eye on it. Anson County, no concerns. Um, what does the purple mean? Um, the purple is a, a tornado warning. If you're talking about on the velocity data, that's something called range folding. That just means the, the microwave energy from the radar is kind of reflecting back on itself. And that happens sometimes in, in a kind of a, uh, a humid setup like this. Um, but purple on the map right there, that means tornado warning if you're looking at that. Statesville, um, we should be clear. Uh, this line is falling apart. I think most of the Piedmont, the Metro Plaza, you're looking pretty good. The only area of real concern for the next hour, and I'm, I'm doing this, it's uh, 9.57, so close to 11 o'clock. Um, probably going to be Burke, Caldwell, maybe Catawba County. Uh, Melvin, thanks. Yeah, Caldwell County had a rough night, man. Three storms. Uh, I haven't seen any damage from tornadoes, but what I have seen is quite a bit of wind, um, some inflow. So we've seen some trees down and some power outages. Gastonia, you're clear. Morganton, uh, you've got another storm. You've got another hour to watch. Maiden, I would keep an eye for another hour or so um, because let me zoom in on Morganton. You've got this storm to your southwest that I, I, I would be watching. Um, not that I think it's going to spin up, but there could be some strong winds. Same for the Maiden area around Hickory. So stay, stay tuned for that. Um, just until that. So yeah, Catawba County, you probably got another hour. I, this is not going to be an overnight thing. So the good news is guys, I can tell you, it's not going to be, I can be up all night. If you can wait it out another hour to 11 o'clock, you should be fine. Um, should be out of that. Ooh, Spruce Pine and little, that area is clear now, but boy, that was rough earlier. Upper Cleveland County, you're looking pretty good. Um, got to watch that storm to your West, but all in all, not too bad. Lincolnton Vale, Love you guys up there in Lincoln County. Great area. Um, you should be okay on the precipitation part. So, so someone asked about the purple area. So I think, I think you were talking about this. Yeah. So this is a velocity data. So on the top of the screen, you could see winds away and towards the radar. So the brighter the colors, the stronger the wind. So the purple you're looking at here, that, that's range folding. That's just think of that like static um, from the radar. The radar's having trouble picking that up. So it turns all purple. Um, it's called RF or range folding. It happens when the radar beam kind of reflects back on itself. You'll see some of it around the radar. So it's just a, a just a, an artifact of the radar. It's nothing in particular. Um, just basically it means bad data, if you want to be honest with you. <laughs> That's kind of what it means in that area. Uh, tornado warning still in effect there for Pickens County till 1015. You might hear some beeping in the background. I was just checking. Um, they canceled it for Oconee County and the latest on that one is uh, near Pickens around 1015, a severe thunderstorm possibly producing a tornado. It was about five miles northwest of Pickens, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. So we've been keeping an eye on that one um, down there. And again, that's the storm. If I'm in Cleveland County, that's the one I want to see stay to the west or weaken completely um, before I can give you the all clear. Rockingham, you're all you're in the clear. Tika K, you're in the clear. Um yeah, that storm, I, I agree with you, Will. That that storm near Marion, let me focus in on that real quickly because that's the one. I don't think it's rotating, Will, to be honest with you, but I do think there's really strong winds in there because um, if you look at it, it, it's pretty broad, but you see those brighter colors, and I'll kind of show you what those brighter colors are. So those are 64 mile an hour winds, so there are some strong winds in there. That's definitely severe thunderstorm criteria. 
So that's why I said, if you're in Morganton and Burke County, um, that's an area where you need to be a paying attention to this storm because as it moves in, and again, let me do a quick storm track on that storm near McDowell County. I'm going to turn off that warning here just because it's the flood. The flood warnings are important. I don't want to discount those, but um, it's actually stopped raining there. So let's track that strong wind, which is right around the Camp Grimes area. It's moving off in this direction. So there's the updated storm track. Uh, Dartersville right now, Glen Alpine, 1018, Morganton, so 1024. Valdez around 1032, Eichert around 1039. Uh, Saw Mills, uh, 10, 1043. Boy, Saw Mills has had a rough night as well. Um, then Lenore around 1046. If it's still going by that time, it could weaken because most of what I've been seeing tonight, these things have been starting to fall apart a little bit. Uh, much weaker setup. Th uh, something I look at called uh, CAPE which is ahead of this. If we look at that real quick, it's going to, it'll show you uh, it's not nearly as strong. It, there's some out there, but it's, it's, it's fainting out really quick. So you can see more and more we're losing that fuel that we had today um, for these storms to develop. So that's what I'm keeping an eye on. Um, I was hoping by nine o'clock we'd be in the all clear, to be honest with you. But the way this is looking right now, we're probably going to have to stay on, um, on, on guard here for another hour or so until this line weakens. Um, any chance the tornado watch is extended eastward? No, there's probably no chance at all. In fact, there's a better chance it would be canceled early. Um, so someone asking about wireless emergency alerts. Yeah, so one thing I will tell you, and I know this seems like a shameless plug, but I swear our app is unbelievable. The WCNC app, download this thing because this not only gives you GPS-based alerts for where your phone is, you can also, right now, you may not be able to tell, I have to show the camera, you can actually click on that. You could be watching what you're seeing right now on the phone. We stream this stuff to our phone. We stream all our on-air coverage. In fact, I can see a little delay that I'm just bringing the phone up now on my phone. Um, and you can also submit pictures and video right from your phone. It's, it's a great app. But if you just have a phone in general, if you don't have any app, period, right, you can go to your settings and go to notifications. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, and this is an iPhone, you'll see a section called... Um, governmental alerts. There's Amber Alerts, Emergency Alert, and Public Safety Alerts. You can turn those on and you can turn your emergency alerts on there. And those are basically, those come from your cell phone carrier and the FCC. It doesn't cost you anything, don't need anything special on your phone, and that thing will go off in the middle of the night. And it is specifically based for your location by cell phone tower. Our alerts are based on your GPS location. Those emergency alerts are based on what tower you're hitting. So. Um, just be wary of that, but it's always good to have those alerts. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch, nothing further east. Yeah, probably nothing east. There's a new tornado warning, though. Let's uh, focus in on that. It's, uh, just outside of our viewing area, but can you hear it going off in the background? That's Rutherford County. So right there. That's so. Those are the storms we're watching. That's why we gotta be on guard for another hour. Um, till these storms weaken. So that storm, that's a tornado warning for Rutherford and Polk County. So uh, Emberglow, my buddies at Emberglow, the Murphys, heads up. That's going to be just here south there, south of Lake Lure. Looking at the, uh, the rotation is not really, it's around Columbus. So Iron Key Brewing, great brewery right there. Um, that's pushing off to the north and east, Mill Spring area, right around the Tryon uh, National Equestrian Center. So not too far from there. And then Green Hill, uh, a lot of hunting property up in there. There's Lake Lure at the top of your screen, Rutherford 10 right there. So um, beautiful country out there, a lot of horse horse farms. Um, that's moving off, a lot of apple farms as well. That's pushing off in that direction. Again, that's a tornado warning until 1045. So, yeah, those are those little storms we're watching back to the southwest and why the tornado watch is up till midnight just in case. Let me go back here and look at this. Uh, yeah, I was right near Columbus, moving uh, northeast at 35 miles per hour. So for folks in that area, if you have friends in Rutherford County, Polk County area, um, let them know that you should be, you know, in your safe location for now until that storm pushes out of here. Um, looking up to the north, though, I'm getting a lot of questions about Hickory. So right now i said hickory you should need to be on guard for an hour if there's going to be something to watch it's going to be that storm to the south that could move up this way but again i will tell you the overall trend has been weakening in these storms but as i mentioned even as they weaken there's been some strong wind locate uh, indications in them so the area 
Let's go to Columbus. So there's that rotation. It's, that's one of the weaker rotations. That's actually not – I think that might be a little, little fishy. Um, there's still some good circulation north of Pickens. That is definitely more of a circulation right there. So what we're looking at right there, and I'll put the circulation on right there, you could see we've got some circulation going on right there. And so the, the reds and greens, for those that don't know, the, the reds are away from the radar, so they're going that way, and the greens are going that way. So if there was a cylinder in between there, that wind would cause the air to rotate like that. And so that's how you end up with rotation on radar. And the tighter it is, the more likely that is a tornado. But it often starts very broad and then tightens up just like a figure skater bringing his or her arms in to spin quicker. Or if you've ever played tetherball, um, you know, as the rope gets smaller on the pole, that ball flings around faster and faster. Um, that conservation of momentum really does speed things up. So this line is the one we're watching. And just to give you a heads up, if you're just tuning in, those are our two tornado warnings right now. Uh, for everybody streaming online, I know a lot of folks are like, Brad, that's not in your viewing area. It doesn't matter. We're online. These are people watching us in those areas. So uh, tornado warning for Pickens County for about another um, nine minutes or so. And then a tornado warning uh, in indicated there in Polk and Rutherford County. That's till 1045. I do not think it'll last that long. And again, the tornado watch is up until midnight tonight for all of those counties shaded in red. So until those storms weaken, the front moves in or everything just dissipates we're likely going to see that tornado watch probably stay up at least through 11, maybe even later than that. Salisbury, you're way out of the range. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, it was a good question. I was surprised it took so long for the tornado watch. Earlier tonight, it looked like there was a 40% chance that was going to happen. I thought, man, it's going to happen because that line's coming in. So it just took a while. Um, Shelby, I would be on guard. Just keep an eye on those storms to your southwest. But um, you definitely are, are right now looking okay. Um, Wilkesboro, you're in the clear, it looks like, because everything's sliding off to your east. The Rutherford County storm, let me go back and do a track on that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to find a circulation because it's really tiny circulation. Um, to me, there's two areas. One is near Columbus, and then there's a little area north of there. So let me back up a little bit. I'm going to do a, a storm track based on it. the speed. What was the speed on this? I do believe it was moving 35 miles per hour. So we're going to grab our storm track. We're going to plot it at 35 miles per hour. So bear with me. And I'm going to track it from around Columbus going northeast at 35. That's the updated track. So Mill Spring area, uh, Emberglow Outdoor Resort right in that area, Rutherfordton, um, Spindale, Forest City, Bostick, and then Ellenboro. Um, so those are the areas that if there is a circulation that stays on the ground, those are the areas of greatest concern. Oop, there's another tornado. So that warning, okay, that's the warning. Not, that's that Pickens County storm. They basically just extended that warning. Um, so let me show you that real quick. So what you're hearing in the background is I have a program on my computer that gives me all the tornado warnings for North and South Carolina. So that's that storm right there. So that's a new warning. That's for uh, Greenville, Henderson, Pickens, and Transylvania County. That's the same storm that was over Pickens. So they just extended the warning more or less. And um, I was showing you earlier, that circulation was a little much more impressive than the one near Columbus. It's right there. Um, let's look at the CC values. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. I, I mean, yeah, I don't see a ton of debris. Yeah, all in all, that's... That's not looking too bad. Got to keep an eye on that. That, that. But that circulation on radar right there, if there's a tornado, it's right in that area. So that's that's what we're seeing on the radar. So again, um, this is why the tornado watch is up till midnight. Until these storms weaken or move out, we're going to have to keep an eye on them. But right now, they don't look like they're not going to make it to I-77 in the same intensity. They will weaken quite a bit. There's our two tornado warnings. Rutherford County, 1045, and then the newest warning, um, Greenville, Henderson, Pickens, and Transylvania County. Let's look at that one toward, it's moving into Morganton now. This storm had strong winds with it. Um, ooh, boy, we've got some deliasing going on here. So the radar is trying to shoot through a bunch of storms, which is never a good thing. Let me look at another radar source. So looking at Morganton area, um, 
just strong winds right now moving in. No rotation in that storm. Um, nice little setup for wind speed. So Morganton, this is a second go around with strong winds for you. Let me look at a different velocity coupler. Um, see if this is going to pop up. New tornado warning for So I'm going to have to go jump on TV. So we'll keep this going. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going to jump off this stream and jump on TV. So I'm going to bail on you, turn on TV right now, and we'll restream this here in a second, okay? the upstate of South Carolina. So just like before, these three storms all showing signs of rotation again, but the most dangerous storm right now is here right around uh, Burke County. So if you're in Morganton, you need to be seeking shelter in the interior room. Get away from those outside walls and windows. I want you to get to the lowest level of your house. If you can get to that you know, basement, if you have one, don't have one, doesn't matter, the lowest floor possible. Put as many walls between you and the outside. So I want you to get away from the outside walls to get those um, walls protection um, from all that flying debris out there. So let's go back to the radar. Um, the reason we're on is because of that tornado warning right there in Morganton. So let's look at the debris. I don't see any debris signature on the radar. So from the radar standpoint, we're not seeing confirmation of a tornado, but we are seeing rotation in the storm. That means one could be developing. So when you see that on the radar, uh, what you're going to do is issue the warning to try to get out ahead of this. And so that warning is for Burke County primarily, but there's a small section of Caldwell County and even a small section back here, uh, McDowell County, but it's really just west side of Morganton. So Morganton um, areas right off of Interstate 40, 
um, going up into the northern part of the county. This is going to move pretty much straight into Caldwell County. So next up is going to be Lenore, Sawmills, Granite Falls area. So in around Lenore, just a heads up, just to put this out there, uh, coming up in about maybe 15 or 20 minutes, if this continues moving off in that direction, um, you're going to have to seek shelter as well. So I would be getting ready to get into that safe spot again. I know this is the second time tonight that we've had to do that, but this is the same location that earlier tonight we saw severe storms and even a tornado warning. So right around Calvin and Glen Alpine, if you look at the velocity data, there's probably already wind damage occurring there. Earlier this evening, we had reports of trees and power lines down in here, but it wasn't because of the storm over Morganton. It was the storm in the northern part of the county. This time, this is right over um, Morganton. So everybody in Morganton should be in their safe spot right now. And I'm talking about most of downtown Morganton. And then next up, it's going to be the folks in Lenore that are going to have to seek shelter. If we go in close here, I'll show you some of the roads here. That's 64. That's 181. Uh, that's a one, uh, 126 right there. And then heading over here towards 70. So all those areas right around there uh, will go into the, the downtown Morganton area. So this is going to be basically just on the north side, northwest side of Morganton as you go towards the north Irvin Road and then up here towards St. Mary's Church Road uh, and then down here towards the Calvin area. So Air Park Drive. So those are the roads that are in the path of the rotation. And then it's gonna move north and then head towards Lenore. Um, Lenore, you're technically not in the warning yet, but the storm is angled right at you. So areas on the north side, uh, Catawba Meadows Park area, um, right around the Burke County Fairgrounds, Freedom High School, those would be areas where we're seeing the rotation and then heading up towards uh, Walter Johnson Lenore Middle School. So those locations there in Burke County would be the areas where the rotation is the strongest. So kind of on the northwest side of Morganton. So let's let's extrapolate this out. If this holds together, that circulation is gonna head up here into Caldwell County. And so it's in Morganton basically right now at 1019 in the evening. Um, Drexel at 1025. Um, Gamwell about 1036. Sawmills 1040. And then Lenore 1043. And then Patterson for the with the third time tonight, I think, we've had a rotation head towards Patterson. This one would be at 1051 this evening. Now, some areas are probably struggling to get some of these warnings because we had power outages earlier in this area. Um, remember, if you do have a phone and you're able to text or call family or friends in this area, please let them know. This is not the warnings from before. This is not her, you know, we're not mistaking this with the previous warning. This is actually a whole new warning and a whole new storm for parts of Burke County and behind it, two other storms were watching. And I will remind you, the whole area in red is under a tornado watch till midnight tonight. So there's a good chance um, this watch could be canceled early, but it's at least gonna go to 11 because we've got warnings in this same area. The thing I've been watching is this tornado parameter. Ahead of that line, we've had some ingredients for tornadoes and those ingredients will stick around till about midnight. They should go down um, to zero again pretty quickly after midnight to about one in the morning. But the potential is that we could see these things stay pretty active um, into the overnight hours. I have a lot of spotter friends up in that area. And so far, I have not seen any reports, additional reports of damage. But again, remember Vanessa earlier telling us about the damage up there with trees and power lines down. Um, that might be delaying some of these storm reports. Good news, I would say, Brad, um, is we haven't been getting any real damage reports either from touching base with emergency officials in these various counties. We did, of course, have some power outages that we told folks about um, in the eight o'clock hour when we broke in with um, the previous warnings. Um, the good news is we're actually seeing a lot of those outages have since been corrected. Um, City of Morganton at one point was dealing with about a thousand folks without power. Latest update about an hour ago from the city. It looks like most folks should have their power in that area again. Looks like Woodside Place and Woodside Street are the only areas remaining with those outages. Um, we also had quite a few that were reported out in Hickory. And it looks like the 2,000 that were originally reported out in Hickory have since been cut down substantially. Actually, I'm only seeing like 
two outages reported out there. Blue Ridge Energy at one point with about 300. Um, now they're down to about 18 in Caldwell County, Brad. Yeah, so th that storm is essentially right over Burke County, and we might see those numbers go back up. So what you're looking on the screen right now, uh, we've got the radar on the left. That's the tornado warning for Burke County. That's a live picture from Morganton. Hunter Signs is up there right now. Um, he actually was going up there to check out some previous damage, um, and then this new warning is there. So, Hunter, I hope you're in a safe spot and kind of off away from it. But I, I do believe he's looking, he's southeast of the storm, if I'm not mistaken, looking back towards the storm. So it's a pretty good location. Um, and one of the things at night, you're not going to see a lot. But one way you can spot a tornado at night is you look for power flashes. Uh, you look for basically, it looks like lightning, but it's coming from the ground, not the sky. And that's an indication that power lines or transformers are being hit um, by the tornado. Sometimes it'll actually illuminate uh, the funnel, but they're really at, at nighttime tornadoes are the worst because most people, it's human nature. You want to visualize and confirm the threat. So what do people do? They go outside. Um, they want to see it. You're not going to see this, folks. You might hear it. Um, you might see a flash from, from a power line, but in most cases, this is rain wrapped. It's windy. It just looks like a wall of water. Um, in, in most cases, the wind might be coming just from the thunderstorm and not the actual tornado. The tornado is embedded into what is likely a, a larger circulation. Um, if, I, if I look closely, there's, it's, it's a really broad circulation. It does not look as tight as some of the ones we saw earlier. I, I'll be honest, the ones we saw you know, right around the 8 o'clock hour, those were pretty significant signatures on the radar. And they, for as far away from the radar as we were, to see that strong was pretty impressive. Uh, the stronger rotation has actually been to the southwest with some of these other storms, uh, like this one around Green Hill, which is the tornado warning in Rutherford County. That one is actually a little more what I would call classic. And then we had another tornado warning there uh, right on the state line in the upstate of South Carolina. Now, unfortunately, those are tracking in the same direction as the current warning. And all of these are going to expire between 1045 and 11 o'clock tonight. So um, this is probably going to lead us right into our newscast as we watch this, unless this thing falls apart completely, which it could. Um, but the way these storms have been moving tonight, the atmosphere off to the right here, and I'll just grab my cursor, uh, the atmosphere here seems to be still ripe enough for these storms to at least maintain some level of low level circulation. And one of the way you could look at the energy, I, I don't normally show temperatures this time of night, but we're still near 70 and we still have dew points in the 60s. So that's really muggy air for this time of the night. And that allows, so what they did is they extended the warning from the Southwest up into Burke County as well. So there's technically two warnings now, Vanessa. We've got one for Burke, Caldwell, and McDowell, and then one for McDowell, Burke, and Rutherford County. But it's still the same two circulations, and I'll highlight those. Um, the two circulations, one is essentially over Morganton, and then this one just to the northwest of Forest City. And these are all moving off in this direction. So you're seeing duplicate warnings here for that reason, um, because there's potentially multiple um, storms there that have rotation within them. So. Uh, I count last time I count, let's see, that's four separate warnings right now, but really this middle one is the same storm. So it's just two separate. And um, you had pointed this out, I mean, obviously earlier, these are some of the same counties as yeah. previously pointed out at eight, in the eight o'clock hour. I mean, is there anything particular to that? Well, it looks like what's happened. So the reason we're seeing this whole line of storms just kind of sit here and kind of be the cold front is coming in right here. So these are forming on the cold front and one after another, kind of like we call it training. You see the cold fronts like the train tracks and the individual storms or the train cars going over that track again and again. So until the front moves, you're seeing some of the, you know, unfortunately, the same areas uh, repeatedly hit with uh, with tornado warnings. Now, as you mentioned, we haven't seen a lot of damage reports that would be indication of a tornado touching down. Most of it's been straight line winds associated with the wind flow going into these, but it's been pretty impressive to see the number of warnings we've had tonight. And I would have probably issued these warnings too based on what you're seeing on the radar. Um, there's tr pretty strong rotation on there, um, but they've been very diligent about at least if there hasn't been damage or that it looks like the circulation weakens quite a bit, um, they have canceled most of these warnings fairly quickly. Um, it looks like, I'm trying to look for some damage reports. Um, Meeseville Road completely blocked. 
I believe that is in McDowell County, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure where that road is, but it looks like it's in that area around Dartersville, um, which is where Camp Grimes is. The, the Mecklenburg County Boy Scout Camp is up in that area. Um, and then down to the south, heading towards Green Hill, as you're just to the east of Lake Lure. And then this is moving straight towards Morganton and Glen Alpine again. So, you know, Morganton, you're under this warning now, but you've got another system just behind it that potentially could produce another tornado. So the rotation is just northeast of Morganton. It doesn't look nearly as impressive, but I will, sh I will show you the winds here. And this is why we're probably going to see some power outages at the very least. You could see the winds anywhere from 59 to 65 miles per hour within that storm, which is right over Morganton. And again, areas like Chesterfield and Valdez and Amherst, and eventually heading into uh, Caldwell County, that storm's heading your way. Then go to the south, and you can see the circulation right around the, between Logan and Green Hill. There is some rotation there on 221. And again, I'll just highlight this with, the, with our icon here. There's rotation right there. It's pretty tight compared to the rotation up in Burke County, but it's also closer to the radar, so it's a little deceiving. And I'll kind of show you there. So let's do a storm track on that because if that continues pushing northeast, it's going to be in Dartersville around 1051 and Union Mills around 1035 tonight. And we'll go up there and track the one in Morganton because I want people in the Lenore to be ready. This warning is probably going to come out here shortly if they don't issue another one. Uh, Lenore 1050. So that warning is up until 11, but the, it's likely going to be outside of that warning polygon here shortly as it pushes off to the north and east. So remember, um, if you're home right now and you're in these warning areas, the purple areas, the pink areas, that's where we want you to seek shelter. If you're not in those areas, you know, be thankful. There's no warning. But if you know somebody in those areas, call them, text them, let them know um, that there is a warning. And we want you to go tell them to get into that interior room away from those outside walls and windows. If you're in an apartment building, um, get to the lowest floor you can. If you've got neighbors or friends downstairs, head down there. But even if you can't get down to the lower floor, even in your second or third floor or, or higher apartment, you can get to the middle of that apartment or the middle of the house um, the best way you can. So that's what we want you to do. So the, the worst of this weather seems to be just northeast of Morganton. And um, our Hunter Signs has been up there this evening checking out previous damage. And I know Hunter is right there on the right. Hunter, what have you been seeing? Any like flashes, like lightning or power flashes you've seen? Hey there, Brad. We haven't so far. We were driving through Morganton when we got this tornado warning, and we went ahead and moved to the southeast side just based off of your forecasting that I was listening into, trying not to be too close up on those dangerous cells that you're talking about. And I was keeping my eye out while listening to you for those flashes, especially near the ground. We're actually by uh, the UNC Health Blue Ridge Hospital here, a little bit on higher ground, and I'm keeping an eye kind of on the ground level because you can see a pretty good distance from here. I haven't seen anything yet. I will say um, there's not a lot of rain falling. Uh, if my camera's up, you can probably see that. We do see the trees swaying quite a bit. There are some pretty good wind gusts that have hit us out here. Um, no big time rainfall, at least where we're at. We are on the southeast side, as I mentioned. But, you know, after hearing your tracking and everything, there was actually a woman who was leaving the hospital. She said, is it safe for me right now, do you think, to to drive through Morganton and try to get home. I said, you know, as we always talk about, why we are parked here is to be next to, you know, I was talking with KJ Jacobs, just being next to some sort of structure in case we all need to ditch, run inside and seek shelter ourselves. And she turned around and said, I'm gonna go back and at least head that way until this passes. So that's the very latest from what, what we're seeing here on the southeast side of Morganton. Thanks, Hunter. So I, I highlighted where you are. You're actually on eight, not too far from 18 and 40. That's where that UNC, um, that's, what is that, UNC Blue Ridge, UNC Health Blue Ridge is right there with that arrow. So I put the arrow pointing right where he is. So he's looking back towards Morganton, and he's in a good spot. He is a little higher up. So if there is damage occurring in Morganton, um, that's where it would be. And that, that was great advice not to travel through Morganton because you would be going right through the heart of that storm. That storm is pushing off in this direction to the northeast. If I loop this, you could see it's moving northeast towards Caldwell County. Now, the next storm in the line is down here, and it's actually it's starting to show better signs of organization. It's got more of a, a hook echo to it now. 
um, and it's actually looking a little bit more robust um, than the Morganton storm. And so right there near Logan, um, south of Union Mills, th there's our rotation right there. So there was rotation right in this area, and it's actually shifting off to the east. You saw the radar just update. And again, remember the radar takes about a minute, minute and a half to do a volume scan, we call it, or even a, a, a single slice scan. It's a giant dish, so it's got to rotate around um, and send out a beam. So that takes some time. So when you look at the radar, um, it, you can't get caught up, and that's where it is. It's probably already moved a little bit, so you got to be out ahead of this. So the areas that need to be on guard, and right there is a strong rotation there um, heading towards the northeast. So Dartersville, Glen Alpine, um, Calvin, and then Morganton again. That circulation is pretty strong right there. You see that little patch of green there near Union Mill. So what's going on here is the yellows are away from the radar and the green is towards the radar. So the column of air between those two airflows is going to be rotating. So it would cause the column of air to rotate like that. So if you imagine having a pencil and those, those orange arrows are your hands, one coming towards you and one going away, the pencil in between your hands would be rotating. So that's what's causing uh, the rotation. And the tighter that circulation is, if we measure that circulation, uh, that circulation is about a mile wide. Um, and again, that's at the altitude of the radar seeing it down in the surface. That's probably maybe a football field in width or so. So it's pretty narrow. Looking to see if there's any debris there. I don't see debris, which is a good sign. The radar is not showing us that it's picking stuff up because you can confirm a tornado with radar now because the radar will pick up the debris that the tornado is tossing into the air. So even without a spotter, the radar is sophisticated enough. If it has a good scan of the lowest levels, it can tell us if there's debris in the air, Vanessa. Are you seeing um, the radar indicate anything else that folks might be experiencing, like maybe hail or something like that? Here's the thing. We haven't seen any hail reports. There's not, these aren't very tall storms. There's not a lot of lightning for that reason as well. So the fact that we don't have a ton of lightning um, and there's no hail means these storms aren't very tall because to produce hail and lightning, you have to have ice in the cloud. So you have to drive that moisture 30, 35, 40,000 feet. That's not happening tonight. So this is all being driven at the lowest levels of the atmosphere. Earlier today, we had really strong southerly winds. Down here at the ground, the winds are coming out of the south and in some cases 30 to 40 miles per hour. And then you go up to around five to maybe 10,000 feet above our heads. Um, and all of a sudden the wind is coming from the west southwest like this. And so these storms, when they build up into that, they naturally want to rotate. That wind shear causes the storms to pivot or rotate. So these are two supercells. We've got one in Burke County moving into Caldwell. Um, and the other one is basically still in Rutherford slash McDowell County, kind of moving into Burke County. Um, so those are the two storms that we're watching right there. So I'm checking to see. I haven't seen any damage reports recently, um, which is a good sign. I'm, this time of night, it's hard to, to get reports in general. But um, in this day and age, usually if there's damage occurring, Vanessa, we're going to get reports fairly quickly. Um, and so that's always a really good indication that at least the tornado isn't on the ground. Or if it is, it's not... Um, in, an, in an area where it's causing damage to structures. It might be in, in the woods or an unpopulated area. Um, so that's a good sign. But we also, another way, search for where the tornado is. If we start seeing power outages, we know the tornado is doing damage to power infrastructure. Would this be a situation where perhaps when daylight does come, some sort of crews would be sent out to see if, like, oh, maybe we missed something? That would I mean aerial surveys would, could reveal a lot. A lot of times tornadoes go through national forest, state forest, and mm -hmm. nobody sees them. And then the next day a plane flies over and there's a path. Yeah. So that certainly could happen. And I think tomorrow you might see at least the local emergency managers will go out, check for damage, and then see if the weather service needs to be deployed up there. But uh, the concern here is, you know, Morganton, Dartersville, and then Lenore. So this storm is moving right towards Lenore. And I mentioned earlier that the rotation in the Caldwell County is pretty broad, but that's strong winds. I mean, that, here's the thing. It doesn't need to be a tornado to cause damage. Wind is wind. You know, if a tree is going to break with a 60 mile an hour wind gust, the tree doesn't care if it's rotating wind or straight line wind or hurricane. It doesn't really matter what produces the wind. It's the fact that you got a 60 mile an hour wind 
that will break a tree branch, topple a chimney, rip shingles off roofs. Um, so that's all that matters. In this case, we've got those winds. So at the very least, there's going to be damaging winds. So you need to be seeking shelter from these storms just to get away from the windows because branches or anything breaks that glass, it comes flying in and however fast the winds are. And in this case, it's 60 to 65 uh, miles per hour. So uh, the tornado warning, you know, is technically for Burke County, but if you're in Lenore or Caldwell County, I want you to treat this just like a tornado warning. So if you're in Lenore, Patterson, Kings Creek area, go ahead, stay in your shelter location. I want you to stay in the interior room until I give you the all clear. Don't wait for the tornado warning because we've already got the weather on top of you. Uh, and then in Morganton, yeah, first storm has passed you. Okay, you're getting out of your shelter right now, your, your safe spot. Maybe get back in there in a minute because this next storm, which is to your south in McDowell County, is going to be heading your way and you might be doing this all over again. Let me look at the circulations again. So two circulations clearly visible on our radar. Let me go back to them real quick. Sorry. Um, right around Lenore, southwest of Lenore, there's a circulation. And then east of Gilkey um, near Union Mills. This is uh, near Dartersville, just east of um, Camp Grimes up there. Um, Mecklenburg County Boy Scout Council uh, uh, camp up there to Camp Grimes that is right in that area pushing up into Burke County so that is where that storm is and all these storms have been moving off in this direction northeast at around 35 and at times 40 miles per hour looks like we're going to get an update to that warning and that is for as I was just telling you in Lenore and Caldwell County to please seek shelter even though there wasn't a warning now if you needed extra confirmation there is now a warning um, so for, for Caldwell County, uh, that warning is now until 1115. And honestly, that's where the storm is. It's kind of moving out of Burke and it's primarily in Caldwell County. So that is the new warning, um, which is in effect there. So thank you guys. If you were seeking shelter already, that is what we want you to do is get to that lowest level of your, your home or your business. Um, if you can get to that lowest level and stay there until this storm passes. But that is a, a, technically a new warning, but it's for the same storm. Does include parts of Alexander County, a very small sliver, um, that northwest corner of Alexander County. So technically Alexander, Burke, and Caldwell County. But I think Burke is gonna be more worried about the next storm, which is to the south. So I'm gonna step over to the key wall here real quick, guys just so I can kind of tell you what's going on here. So everybody watching down in the Charlotte area is like, wow, there's been a lot of warning sound. I haven't seen anything yet. Well, that's a good thing, but this front is sliding east slowly. It's been showing signs of weakening at times, but these two supercells, this one right here, which is now moving towards Lenore. So Lenore, you're in your shelter location. You're staying there. Morganton, you might've gotten out, but here's the thing. The next storm right here, this is moving up in your direction as well. These storms are, uh, are kind of flying off to the northeast around 40, maybe 35, 40 miles an hour. Um, but the whole front is barely drifting east. So these are kind of tracking this direction, but the front itself is drifting east at maybe five miles per hour. So until we either eat up all the instability here or the front moves through and weakens, um, we're going to see this threat kind of stay up for a while. Here it is, you know, 1039, the, the tornado watch is up until midnight. Now, will we likely see severe storms in the Piedmont? Probably not, because by the time that front gets here, it should be weakened. But there's a good reason that watch was up until midnight, because it's at least going to be 11 or 11.15, where we have some tornado warnings in effect for parts of the foothills in the Unifor region. So let me go back into Caldwell County. Really broad circulation here. So we got really strong winds over sawmills. And then in Lenore, they're coming back this way, but it's a really big circulation. So as I mentioned, I think there's definitely some type of wind damage occurring in there. Uh, whether or not it is a tornado is really yet to be determined, but it probably doesn't matter. Um, it's still very strong winds. Let me draw these back on there. So we've got broad circulation here, but strong winds. The circulation that's the strongest is right here along 64. 64 basically goes from parts of Rutherford County up into parts of McDowell and then goes into Burke County. Um, then that's, that's pretty broad circulation as well. But you see the bright yellows on our radar. Those bright yellows are really strong winds. So you can see over 60 miles per hour. The threshold for severe thunderstorm winds is 58 miles per hour. Um, so that's all it takes 
to get a severe thunderstorm warning. So we've got way above that. So even without a tornado on the ground, you're going to have damage and the tornado warnings are in effect there, but they could just as well be severe thunderstorm warnings causing damage as well. Let me do an updated track here for folks in Lenore. Stay in your shelter location if you're in Lenore. We really need you to stay there for the time being. Track this off to the northeast. So uh, Kings Creek, Elkin, Ferguson between now and 11, uh, 1106 or so. So that's moving up into parts of uh, Wilkes County. Then our next storm, which is down here, almost almost to Darvisville. Let me let me look where the circulation is. It's just south. It's on 64 right there. So I'm going to track the circulation. We're not tracking the rain. We're tracking where the circulation on the radar is. And that's going to put it back in the Glen Alpine at around 11.09. Morganton, 11.14. And then Flat Gap around 11.19. So you potentially could see another circulation pass over Morganton. I'm going to widen this out just to give you the overall perspective because there's three tornado warnings in effect. This one's going to be canceled shortly in the upstate. But if you look at that, it's not, there's not many storms out there. Um, we told you this wouldn't be widespread, and it isn't. But, boy, where the storms have gotten going, mm -hmm. they've been able to tap into some really warm air. And from the 8 o'clock warnings, which were just back to the west of here, this has only maybe moved. This front, let me look at this, how far this has moved. We had warnings about 16 or 17 miles east of where we had them earlier this evening. So they didn't really move all that much. So pretty impressive storms. Now, I know Hunter's still up there. I'd be curious to see what reports he's getting, but I don't know, Vanessa, if you've seen any more power outage reports up in that area. I have not seen any yeah. damage reports. I keep I keep checking and the numbers seem pretty consistent in our area. I mean, yeah. quite, quite frank, the worst of the power outages at this point seem to have shifted up towards the Hendersonville area, yeah. which I did see around that area where all the green is there. You can see um, on your radar that we've got pulled up yeah. that that area is also obviously being impacted. Um, but There's really strong winds in there, and my guess is too what we're seeing um, with the front strong winds, but the ground's pretty saturated, so we're probably seeing some trees come down there as well. But yeah, these there's two distinct supercells on the map right now, um, and I, I will highlight those real quickly here because um, it's right there. There's one there, and there's one there. And if you're wondering what's a supercell, a supercell is a type of thunderstorm that has a rotating updraft. These are the most powerful thunderstorms that there are. They tend to produce tornadoes, but supercells produce large hail, damaging winds, and all kinds of other problems. But supercells are individual storms, which oftentimes do produce the bigger tornadoes. Um, around here, we tend, to get, we tend to get squall lines, big lines of storms. When you get these individual storms, they are much more dangerous because they're not interfered by other storms, and they tend to do their own thing, and they can rotate independent of each other. So the fact that we have two of these kind of rotating and moving through the area um, especially this time of night, it's uh, 1043, is, is, is pretty unprecedented in March um, to lose the heating of the day and still have these things going strong there. And again, just to highlight where the rotation is, I can clearly see them on radar. Uh, it's pretty broad, and there's good reason there's a warning out for these. These would, in almost every instance, you would issue a warning for these because the conditions are favorable for a tornado to develop. So from... Lenore to Sawmills, you better be in your shelter location right now because that thing is right on top of you. Um, Cedar Rock, your next, Oak Hill, um, Kings Creek, and then moving up into parts of Wilkes County. So that's where it's heading next. Morganton, you're in between storms. So if you're watching me in Morganton online, on air, um, you've got a couple minutes here. You can maybe get to another location quickly in the next five minutes because I'm going to want you there before this next storm, which is down toward Dartersville, gets up in your direction because that is going to be the next storm, and it has rotation in it as well. So I'll look at the rotation there. It's moving up 64. It's right there in the middle of your screen. It's heading towards, uh, is that 226? Yeah, 226 there. Um, then it's going to cross over the county line into Burke County. So it's, it's moving through that rugged area there, northeast Rutherford County, southeastern McDowell County, and then um, moving into the southern tip there, not too far from South Mountain State Park, um, which is just off to the east there. So pretty mountainous, rugged area there. Um, so you're not going to see much in that area, even at night. During the day, it would be tough to right. see anything there. 
Yeah, this has been the same trend pretty much all evening when we've had these warnings as these storms are really moving in the same path, mainly to the northeast. And what we've noticed as well with these particular cells that have been tornado warned, uh, they are moving at about the same speed, 35 to 40, 40 miles per hour. So they are moving at a decent pace. Also, uh, this is all the more reasons why we need to have three ways of getting a warning, especially this time of night as many of you are preparing to go to bed and now you're having to uh, seek shelter because of these warnings. But yes, as Brad mentioned, these are discrete cells. Typically, we are looking out ahead of the cold front for these types of cells as we were doing earlier today before sunset for this type of activity, but right now we have these warnings in effect until 11 o'clock and 11.15 as these storms move into Caldwell and a part of Alexander County. Now, looking back towards the southwest of the two cells that we are tracking right now, uh, this is a good sign that we're not seeing anything that really stands out right now in terms of possible rotation. But certainly looking at that one cell, Brad, that is moving near Logan and that cell is now moving into Burke County, as you uh, mentioned, how folks are maybe moving from the safe place thinking they have the all clear. But once again, there is some indication of rotation as uh, we are looking at radar as, a, as it stands. Yeah, so that, that, that circulation there is kind of creeping closer to the Burke County line. And, and reason I'm highlighting this is because um, this is around 64 and a 226 right there. Uh, that's right near the Silver Creek Motocross uh, area. So if you know where that area is, that's where that circulation is. The other circulation now is much weaken, weaker. It's east of Lenore, uh, between uh, Lenore and Little River. So it's on 64, kind of in the eastern, southeastern part of Caldwell County, heading towards the Kings Creek area. Um, so that circulation, now I hate, I don't want to say it's weaker, because one of the, it, this can deceive you, as the, the, the radar um, gets farther and farther away from this storm, it has a tougher time with the resolution, the beam width gets bigger, the radar beams higher in the sky. You know, think about it as you get farther away from a single cell tower, you go from five bars to one bar, your signal isn't as great. So as you get farther from the radar, the signal isn't doing as much. So the fact that we have that much rotation that far from the radar, which by the way is way down in Greer, South Carolina, if you see that much rotation, that's pretty much producing some kind of a wind damage at the surface. Because it, if it looks like that with that resolution, you know uh, you're at least getting some straight line winds at the surface. And now the winds are showing up higher, uh, mainly because we're looking higher in the sky. But those are really strong winds. So that is going to bring down trees and power lines. That will cause windows to break. So I want you to stay in your shelter location in Caldwell County uh, until we give you the all clear. Burke County, as KJ mentioned, Morganton, you're kind of running out of time. You're probably going to have to head back to your shelter location as this next storm uh, moves up from the south. Now, I kind of see out the corner of my eye, um, and they have to tell me in the booth, Hunter is still up in the Morganton area. Is he moving, or is he seeing something up there? Okay. He's, he's staying put right now, which is good, because where he is, uh, Hunter Signs, he's in Morganton. And I will tell you, Morganton, if you're, uh, uh, Hunter, if you're listening to me, the location you were at earlier... I believe was right there near 18 and 40. So if I am not mistaken, you are right in this area. And the reason I say that is because now this next storm is probably gonna hit you straight on because it's coming right there. So unlike the previous storm, which passed to your west, you might wanna get in a different location for this next one because it's gonna be coming right at you. And the circulation is still way down to your southwest, but you're going to get into some rain here before that circulation gets there. Hunter, uh, are you still up there in the same spot? We are, but we are going to heed your advice <laughs> and start moving. So don't you worry. Um, I will say I did just check in with uh, Michael, who is the emergency management um, director here in Burke County, to ask him if there were any new reports of um, any downed trees or structure damage from that cell that went up towards Lenore. He did tell me he doesn't have any reports yet. Of course, like you have been mentioning, um, it is still nighttime. We 
saw the previous cells um, on the last tornado warnings that moved through this area. It produced uh, power outages for about a thousand customers. Um, though that power has been restored, we actually came up here and we're seeing crews leaving the areas that didn't have power then. We don't have any new reports of power outages from that first cell, but like we said, as we continue to move here, we are coming up on 18, yeah. um, going to go through uh, Morganton and kind of move to some safer ground, Brad, as this other cell starts moving our way. Yeah, good call. I would say go back through Morganton, then you'll get west of this, and it will pass off to your east. That's a good good storm chasing uh, technique there. Get west of this line because this one, unlike the previous storm, which kind of moved just over Morganton or west, this one looks like it's going to be over Morganton to the east. So it's going to be more towards South Mountain area um, and then traveling maybe closer to Connolly Springs and the Sawmills area. So um, folks up there, you know those locations I'm talking about. The areas that I'm, that I'm concerned about with this next one, and more towards like the sunny side, Salem, um, Drexel side of Morganton, um, more so than the northwest side, which was closer to you know Freedom High School. This area, I'm, I'm looking more towards like Robert L. Patton High School area, um, and then right there where Hunter just was, which was UNC Health Blue Ridge, um, those areas are going to be more in line with this. And then it's going to uh, cross over um, Lake Rodas there and then eventually move towards Amherst and then maybe towards the southeast side of Lenore um, with this next storm. But that doesn't even include the storm that's east of Lenore right now, which is pretty much on, on 64 there. A really strong winds head towards Little River. So folks in western uh, Alexander County, uh, you need to be taking this storm seriously. Even though there's a very small section of northwest Alexander County under this warning, there are strong winds spreading to Ellendale, Little River, maybe even the west side of Taylorsville. Not that it's tornadic winds, but it doesn't really matter. It could be 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds there. Um, Hickory, folks in the Unifor region, uh, you need to be on guard for this next storm. This storm coming out of McDowell and Southern Burke is probably going to clip uh, the northwest side of, of the Hickory um, area. So uh, anyone in the Unifor region, especially closer to the Burke and Caldwell side of the Unifor, um, that's the area that we would be watching for potentially damaging winds. And again, that rotation is pretty much over South Mountain State Park, um, which, you know, the South Mountain State Park is kind of takes up parts of Cleveland County, Southern uh, Burke County, and extreme eastern uh, southeastern McDowell and Rutherford County. So South Mountains are a big area, um, pretty wide open there. That's where that circulation is going. And as it crosses out of the mountains, it's going to head towards the sunny side, NOLA area, Salem area. there on the south, southeast side of, of, of Morganton. I think that's the area that I would be watching out for there. So over South Mountains right now, pushing to the north and east. Um, the fact that we haven't got damage reports from emergency management um, from our Twitter feed, I, I usually get a ton of information sent to me um, from our spotters that we haven't gotten. That's a good thing. I'm actually pretty happy because that tells me we're not getting something on the ground that's causing widespread damage up in those areas. But both of these warnings go to 11, 11, 15. Um, so we're getting pretty late at night. The other concern I'm going to have, Vanessa, is that we're getting to the time of night where, you know, people probably are going to sleep aren't paying attention to what's going on. So one thing you're going to want to do is make sure you charge up your phone here for the next couple of hours. I don't think this will go well into the overnight, but I would be ready to have maybe some alerts going off between midnight, maybe to 1230 if these storms hold together. And one thing you're going to want to make sure your volume is up on your phone, make sure you have it charged up and make sure it's ready to go. And maybe just keep that shelter location um, ready to go. I'll keep Keep your helmets in there, maybe a bottle of water, a flashlight, maybe a battery pack, something like that. That would help kind of keep everything kind of charged up. Um, yeah, really, really interesting to see some of the reports we're seeing across the board um, of some minor power outages, but nothing widespread in our area. So we're looking at, well, I was talking to you, we're looking at some, some video from earlier tonight, some pictures from earlier tonight. Um, of a possible funnel cloud. This was around 6, uh, 610, 605. That's up in Yanceyville. So a little bit different system um, from earlier tonight. So we saw a lot of funnel clouds and wall cloud reports earlier tonight, but haven't seen any confirmed touchdowns of these. Just some really strong signatures sure. on the radar. So the one we're talking about here is right here on the 
This is really moving into Alexander County. Uh, that latest volume scan right there pushes it into the northwest section of Alexander County. So northwest of Taylorsville, north of Little River, that's pushing north towards the Wilkes County line. Then we've got the second one, which is just moving out of South Mountain State Park and is crossing into Burke County. These are kind of trending east a little bit. For the first time tonight, there's a little bit of a shift east. Let me loop this. And you can see these individuals, these two supercells are actually drifting to the east slightly. And so we're starting to see a little bit of a shift to the east. So that means the front's moving, Vanessa. And I think we actually are going to start to see the shift to the east. Now, naturally, the first question I, I can see, a lot of folks around the Charlotte area going, are these going to be heading our way? Well, just based on the trends, we would be looking southwest of Charlotte. Anything in the upstate would be something of a concern. Right now, as KJ mentioned, everything's weakened down there. So these are primarily going to stay north and west of the Charlotte area. The areas that we'll have to pay attention to are primarily going to be Hickory, um, Morganton, Lenore, Taylorsville, maybe Statesville. I don't think it'll make it all the way to Statesville, but northern Iredell County would be the other area. So let me circle that area of concern. Basically right in here, I think I would be watching these for the next hour, hour and a half till midnight tonight because that's going to be when the watch expires. And just to reiterate, um, we'll go back to this real quickly. This watch is up until midnight for those same areas. So, the air, I mean, I should have just showed you this. The area in red kind of shows you the areas that we're concerned about. Probably not going to make it all the way to Charlotte, but might be close to Hickory, Shelby, Statesville area um, if they hold together over the next hour or so. And the midnight figure, is that related to the heat of the day burning off by then? Or, or I guess what is? Two things. The, yeah, we'll lose the heating. The, the, we'll start cooling the atmosphere down enough that we lose the instability. But also the front should be pushing enough uh, colder air in from the west as well to help. Score. So it's two things. It's loss of heating of the day and the cold front bringing cooler, drier, stable air in. So the combination of the two should help shut these things off. And I, I will tell you, it's already starting to happen. I know we have two tornado warnings. Like, Brad, how is it weakening? The fact that we're not seeing lightning tells me the storms are getting weaker because they're not developing higher. We don't have hail, we don't have lightning developing, so that means the storms aren't developing vertically. So the updrafts aren't staying or building up, and so that's going to allow these storms to weaken. The problem is the wind fields are so strong that they're keeping the low levels of these storms spinning, even though the updrafts aren't you know, building them back up. So again, um, two areas, northwest of Taylorsville, South Mountain State Park. There's our two circulation. Those are literally the only storms now in all of the two state area. So if I widen this out, you can see that little line is it. We look to the Southwest. I'll even look at a wider radar view. I mean, th that'll show you, look at the trend. That whole line over the last three hours is weakened, but look at the two little tiny storms that are left. The only two left are the ones that we have tornado warnings for. So looks like they're whittling some of these down. Okay, they what they did is I expected them to do this. They actually issued another warning, it's the same storm, um, for northwestern Alexander County. And we told you that this is probably going to be the case, um, that we would want to keep this warning um, intact here, because that is definitely one of those things you got to keep an eye on, because as they drift to the east, and you'll hear my computer go off there briefly, um, that's just a new warning. So that, that warning is actually, I know it's a new one, it goes to 1145, that's for northwestern Alexander and eastern Caldwell County. So that is, that is the, that's for that storm there. It's really confusing because you got so many warnings, but it's only two storms. And let me break this down real, real simply. We've got one storm here near Ellendale and one south of Morganton. Those are the only two storms. Don't get caught up in all the flashing purple. Those other warnings are really um, because they're still in effect from the previous location of the storm. So if I track those individual storms near Ellendale, that one's moving that direction right now, 1103, and then the next one south of Morganton. So we'll keep tracking this coming up here at 11. Thank you, Brad. And of course, we do want to begin here 
our newscast at 11, of course, starting with this breaking news, the threat of tornadoes as we remain on the air here. We thank you so much for joining us. Um, of course, we're following minor flooding as well from tonight's storms in the Carolinas. Right now, storms continue to move throughout the region. WCNC Charlotte has team coverage of the storms tonight. Our Hunter signs live in our Chevy storm tracker in Morganton. Yeah, we're going to get to him in just a few minutes. Uh, we do want to see where these storms are, where they're headed. I know Brad has been detailing those uh, details for us leading up to this point, but let's recap if we can, Brad. Yeah, this has been a long night of tracking these storms. So let me give you the latest if you're just tuning in at the top of the hour. We've been kind of breaking in and out of programming since about 8 o'clock tonight. We had one series then. This has been the second series. So the latest is the, the warning that we're most concerned about right now is this first one, which is technically for Alexander and Caldwell County. I would kind of disregard that Burke Caldwell one because it's, it's not really in effect anymore. It's right there that we're talking about. And let me show you the rotation. It's pretty broad. It's north of Little River, north of Ellendale. It should stay northwest of um, Taylorsville, but there's circulation right there, and it is tracking off in this direction. Let me grab the, grab the tracker here. Tracking off in this direction at about 40 miles per hour. Um, again, didn't even have a city there, so let me re retract that. Um, the circulation north of Ellendale. So Ellendale, you should be in your shelter location. So Boomer around 1117. So storm number two is the other one, which is just to the south of Morganton now, coming out of South Mountain State Park. If we look at the circulation there, same kind of thing. It's there, South Mountain State Park, southern part of Morganton. The area I'm talking about is just across the, the, the county line there as you come out of South Mountain State Park in Enola, Salem, Sunnyside area of Burke County. And we'll do a quick track on that. That's gonna go towards the east side of Morganton. So Eichard, you would be in line for this as well. Um, Connolly Springs around 1124. So those are the two storms that are causing all the problems. There, there is actually no other storms or much rain out there. There's a few sprinkles back to the west, but I showed this earlier. This, this was a really telling loop. This is a three hour loop. Look how that line of storms has been whittled, whittled, whittled down. And then in the last couple of frames, the only two storms are these two tiny cells, which are supercells that are producing the tornadoes. And there's the two tornado warnings that we're tracking right now, um, moving to the north and east. I've been looking at storm reports. I have not seen any come out of here. I actually have them turned on on the map in case we get a confirmed spotter report of some kind. And so far, uh, we have not seen any confirmed reports come out of there. A lot of flood reports, um, flash flood warnings still for Burke and Caldwell because they've been hit so repeatedly with the rain. That flash flood warning is up until two o'clock in the morning. So. I'll be honest with you, the flash flooding could be a big issue as well. You probably do not want to be driving around tonight in Burke or Caldwell County because you could have trees down from tornadoes or wind, but also washed out roads um, due to all that um, flash flooding going on. So they just extended that tornado warning into Wilkes County, which is really kind of what we expected. And that's just the same storm uh, moving up into Wilkes County. So it looks like that's going to stay away from Iredell County. Iredell County looks to be okay. Um, Hickory is the one area that I'm, I'm really watching closely because I'll go over to the map here and show you that that one in, in the southern part of Burt County, the Sunnyside Salem area, south side of, of Morganton there, right there, this is trending east. So Eichard, Sawmills, and then e west side of Hickory there, I would be prepared that this circulation might move there. Northwest Alexander County, that's moving away, but this one south, southeast side of Morganton. Remember the first storm tonight, was on the west side of Morganton. So it moved through this area, then it moved up there. The next one came up from the south. It's kind of in Morganton East. So Hunter Signs was on the east side, rode it out as the first one went by to the northwest. He's booking it back this way on 18, so he can look back at this storm as it travels uh, to the south and east of Morganton. So talk about a crazy evening. Morganton's had storms all around them, and some of the biggest damage reports we saw today were from storms in the upper part of the county, which were pulling in strong winds and causing some tree damage in those areas. So I'm just checking to see. And Brad, while you check yep. that, um, I'll chime in for a few seconds. Um, also too, we're really noticing that these storms are moving now towards the east more so than to the northeast. In addition to that, we're really seeing this cold front sort of push ahead some of these storms as we started the tornado coverage around eight o'clock. These storms were back over 
into western Caldwell County over near Globe, Patterson, west of Lenore. Now these storms are east of Lenore, um, certainly moving this northern storm. That particular cell is now moving into Alexander County uh, with those strong winds and also east of Morganton now as Previously, it was just uh, west of Morganton. So we're certainly seeing these two sales ongoing for tonight. And again, that tornado watch is in effect uh, for at least another 55 minutes to an hour. Okay, so we just had that updated warning there. And it does, and as I expected, this is kind of what I was worried. It does include Hickory now. So um, they updated that warning for the Southern Burke County storm. And that does include um, the Hickory area. So the fact that we're seeing that issued for uh, the Hickory area is not surprising. I kind of expected that to happen, but you can see that new warning does include parts of Catawba County and the Hickory area. What's interesting is, is as you were talking there, KJ, I was pulling up the terminal Doppler radar. There's actually a much better view of the circulation there on the um, Caldwell Alexander County line. That is really an impressive little circulation there because if I highlight the winds, so winds are 45 miles per hour away from the radar and then 25 miles per hour towards it. The negative number means the wind is coming at the radar, so it reads negative. Um, that just that helps us with the direction. So basically, 45 mile hour winds are going this direction, and 25 are coming this direction. So what happens in between those two wind fields? You rotate the air, and what happens is you get rotation, and that causes uh, either a mesocyclone or a tornado. So that's a pretty strong signature still showing up right there. Um, in northwest Alexander County. And then we come back to the Morganton area. This one's a little bit weaker, but you can see that same kind of broad, it's much broader. Um, the red again is away and the green is towards. So the natural indication, this is how the radar tells us where there's rotation, um, where we have coming and going very close together, you tend to see rotation. So that's where that rotation is occurring right now. So just to recap, these warnings get updated, but they're for the same storms. New warning for Northwest Alexander County and Northeast uh, Caldwell County till 1145. But the latest warning is this one for the Hickory area. This is the newest warning. This is in, uh, in effect until 1145 as well for Burke, Caldwell and Catawba County. And the latest on that, guys, that does include the Hickory area. So that's all of the Unifor region. People in Hickory, please seek shelter uh, until 1145 or until this storm diminishes. All right, um, Brad, I know you said that you're going to continue to look for damage reports. Uh, we want to get over to our crew that's on the ground looking to see exactly how the storm is impacting folks. So Hunter Signs has been in the Morganton area in the Chevy Storm Tracker. I know, Hunter, you were kind of trying to move away from where you were previously. Hunter, what are you seeing? Yeah, Fred and Vanessa, right now uh, we are in downtown Morganton on 18, and I'm going to flip the camera here so you can kind of see what we're seeing. We've gone through some patches of rain. Some have been rather heavy. You can see the wind whipping the rain on our windshield and on businesses nearby. And at other times, it's like this. It's pretty calm, but you do see trees swaying as it is windy conditions out here. We did have to move. We've been trying to bounce around, trying to steer clear of the bad parts of these supercells, as Brad has pointed out, because Morganton has been, you know, dancing with these storms, uh, for a lack of a better term. But earlier in the day, I do want to bring up some video, because it hasn't only been the winds, there have been some significant flooding, especially up in the Boone area. Uh, this is video that you're seeing here, a flash flooding um, about three hours ago. This is posted to Twitter up there. And then the second video is actually some flash flooding happening outside of Appalachian State uh, university there in Boone. Uh, the person who tweeted that saying that this was flooding at a dorm on campus. We don't know yet the extent of the damage to the dorm um, or how much flooding actually made its way inside of that dorm. We have reached out to the university uh, to see if we can get some information, but we just haven't heard back quite yet. Back here live in the Chevy Storm Tracker here um, in Morganton, we are actually about to turn, our, uh, turn around and make our way to Freedom high school where Brad has pointed out so we can kind of uh, ride out the rest of this supercell that's making its way through our area. Um 
safely, of course. We like to be next to uh, some sort of heavier structure in case we need to bounce out of the vehicle and seek shelter ourselves if things get bad. But right now, not a lot of rain. I would say wind has been the biggest culprit here in the Morganton area all night from what we have seen. It has produced some trees, caused some trees to fall down actually on some power lines. Earlier tonight, there were about a thousand customers without power, but when we got up here, it was being restored. The city says that power has been restored to those customers already. We have not heard of any reports from emergency management. Uh, I checked in a couple of minutes ago before we went on the air and no reports into their office of any significant damage or flooding. But right now, as you can see, some calm conditions right now as we brace ourselves for this next cell that continues to move through the Morganton and Hickory area. We'll send it back to you live from the Chevy Storm Tracker. All right, Hunter, thank you so much. And as always, be safe out there. We wanted to touch on some of the power outage impacts that we're seeing from this storm, you know, really has been kind of a transformation from earlier this evening. You might recall if you were with us in the eight o'clock hour, we saw a whole lot of power outages north of Lenore, kind of around that Patterson area. Um, we had a couple thousand reported over in Hickory. Of course, Morganton, where Hunter was, uh, we just saw him. They had a power outage reported around a thousand people impacted there. And those were actually wrapped up pretty quickly. Um, those were all cleared out by the time um, we actually got our crew out there. And as you can see from this Duke Energy map, we're seeing most of those outages concentrated out towards the Hendersonville area at this point, which is going to be out towards our west and a little bit to the south um, from the focus of our local tornado warnings. About 3,000 folks reported without power out in that area. And then also just checking in on the Blue Ridge Energy map, which obviously this is the Duke map, but um, we were following the Patterson outages there earlier. Most of the outages we're seeing Blue Ridge Energy reporting concentrated over towards Wilkes in Allegheny. I'd say about 1,600 or so folks uh, impacted there. In about 20 miles to the east of Morganton, again, is Hickory. Then Brad was talking about that. Some of the things we're seeing in Hickory that our Hunter Signs was talking about, uh, the, the little bit of flooding trees down. Uh, the same concern, Brad, you spoke about uh, with Hickory uh, because of this newest warning uh, up until 1145. You're saying Catawba, Hickory included, along with the Burke, uh, Catawba, and Caldwell County's uh, warning that you're watching very closely right now. Yeah, so that area, you, you probably heard me refer to that Unifor region. If you're not from that area, you're probably, what the heck is the Unifor, right? Well, it's where these four counties come together. It's the unity of these four counties, Alexander, Burke, Caldwell, and Catawba County. That's basically the Hickory metro area. So from Brookfield to Conover to Iker down towards uh, Meadowbrook Village area, uh, you're basically on the edge of the storm. But what I'm watching is the circulation with this storm is back here south of Valdez and Eigert. It's drifting off towards the east. Um, KJ was mentioning how there's a little, we've noticed this, a little shift to the east in the track of these. They were primarily moving northeast, but I would say they're move, moving like east, northeast now. Um, and so this is heading towards the Eichert area. So Hickory 1133 and likely the west northwest side of Hickory I'm talking about. So in Hickory, those folks that live on the east side, you know, maybe heading more over towards um, areas as you go east towards, uh, you know, basically over towards the Conover Claremont area, you're probably going to be more safe. But the Longville, uh, Longview, Hildebrand area up towards the North Lakes, uh, you know, basically from the center of town west, just west of the Catawba Science Center, you know, heading over there towards the Hickory Aviation Museum. Those are the areas, the Longview area, which are probably going to be closer to the track of this than on the east side, which are over there towards, you know, the Claremont area and Conover and heading over towards the Rock Barn in that vicinity. You're going to be much safer over there because this storm is likely going to be just west of there. So as we look at the track, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of plot that out. I'm going to put the track back on here. And if I track the circulation, which is right there on 18, which was really close to where Hunter was. He was not too far from there earlier. So the circulation passed just to the east of where he was. Um, Flat Gap, 1118, Connolly Springs, 1123, Eichard, uh, Rodis, Sawmills around 1130. And again, when you see these times on our storm tracks, please don't take them to be super specific because if the storm speeds up or slows down, those would adjust by a couple minutes. So I always like to tell you plus or minus about five minutes. Get to your shelter location five minutes before that time on my screen 
and stay there five minutes longer uh, because that is kind of the way these storms go. They pick up speed, they slow down, they rotate a little bit. So this is a general idea on, on where you should be uh, in your shelter location. Now, the all clear, I can give you some all clears back to the west here um, for areas west of Morganton, you're good. Um, if you're in Upper Burke in Caldwell County, basically, you know, where you go north of Morganton along 64, anywhere north and west of 64 in both counties, you're kind of in the clear. The area is shifting more towards the eastern part of 64, so more towards the airport there in, in Hickory and more towards uh, eastern Lenore um, and maybe, I would say not even eastern Lenore, maybe closer to um, the Little River east of Sawmills would be more and then Taylorsville. Now, Taylorsville, that's an area I would be be on guard here. These are the folks that probably need to pay attention tonight the most is I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to do a track straight up here. Anybody that lives in these areas, even if you're not under a warning, don't go to bed without charging that phone up or having alerts turned on. Because if you live in Hickory, if you live in Little River, if you live in Taylorsville, if you live in Love Valley in the northwest part of Iredale County, you're going to want to be prepared because these storms, these two supercells, are tracking in that direction. Statesville South looks good. Unless this thing takes a big shift to the east, I think we're going to be fine there. The good news is not only is moving to your northwest, but the overall trend in these storms has been to weaken. So the tornado watch, and I'll show you the tornado watch again, the areas in red, that is up until midnight tonight. Thought maybe we'd see some more counties whittled away. I think they're just going to leave it up. Um, I think you'll see this watch stay up until uh, 12 a.m. And so what's the difference between a watch and a warning? We always like to show you, you know, the cupcake graphic. This works really well. When we have the ingredients for something, it's a watch. So the ingredients were in place in that red area. Once a uh, tornado is either formed, spotted, or detected on radar, a tornado warning is issued. It's a more imminent threat. And so that's what we've seen tonight. We've seen both of those issued. Uh, unfortunately, the tornado warnings came way before the watch, uh, as the watches um, sometimes are put out several hours ahead of time. Tonight was one, not one of those nights. So the two warnings in effect right now is going to be northwestern Alexander, eastern Caldwell. That's 1145. So that's going to be for another 29 minutes. And then eastern parts of Burke and northwest Catawba, which includes the city of Hickory, that is in effect until 1145. Now, these storms could move out of there quicker, which means they could be canceled sooner, or the storm could weaken and it could be canceled early. But until you hear me say, all clear, stay in that shelter location. If you're in those purple polygons, those are the areas we want you to be protected. And like I always say, if you're not in those areas, but you know somebody that is, call them, text them, DM them, tell them, hey, tornado warning, take this seriously. Just stay in your shelter location until the all clear is given. Um, the good news in all this, I have a ton of spotters in that area. We have over a thousand WCNC weather spotters, not a single report of damage so far. Wow, them. wow. So that, that's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's a good thing we're not getting those reports. And you talked about how some of these watches came down before the, uh, or the, I should say the warnings, yeah. you said came down before the watches. That's significant given the time of day that this is, because, yeah. and this is why you're pressing this so much, because this is, uh, it's important for people to be vigilant, especially this time of, of, of day or night, we should say. Yeah, I mean, most of this didn't happen until the sun started going down. Things started popping around 8 o'clock. The sun set at 737. Yeah. So this happened after dark, and two problems you have with after dark, spotters don't become really good for seeing the tornado. You can still report damage. You don't see anything. People are driving around, and people just pay less attention to their surroundings at night. So there's less people probably watching the news, paying attention. So this will catch people off guard. And, you know, yesterday we were really concerned about the daylight hours. And this thing slowed down so much today and really made it more of a nighttime risk. That's the other part of this. We thought it'd be more of an afternoon risk, and now it's more of a nighttime risk. And that's continuing uh, to be the issue. So let me go back to the radar real quickly because there's two areas of circulation. I can see them clear as day now, um, right near Valdez. Again, really strong circulation here. And I'm going to plot a couple things on here. I'll jump over to the map real quickly. Now, those winds don't seem off the charts, but what you're seeing there is the winds are 22 miles per hour away from the radar and 16 at. So if you take your hand and you've got a pencil, right? and you go like that, the pencil will spin in your hands. That's what's happening there. So that's one area of rotation. And then going to the north and east, we've got another area of rotation, which is right there in the northwest corner of Alexander County. That is the area where we got another clear rotation. It's a little tighter up in that area 
Let me move the map up there. It's kind of in our blind spot here, but right here north of Taylorsville, there's rotation just south of the, of the Wilkes County line. So some good news, I think we're going to see that one weaken a little bit, but Hickory, this is good news for you because if I loop this, see where this is moving. This is kind of traveling. Let's go back a couple frames. Can you see the distinct areas of rotation? I mean, it's really clear. We had one here and one here. I can loop that a couple times and you could see it. That's, you know, you see those two storms rotating side by side. Mm -hmm. So the good news is I think Hickory, this is going to stay to your west. But still on the west side, I want you to stay in your shelter location, especially if you're towards the airport and the museum over there, the aviation museum. I, w I definitely would stay in your, your safe spots, especially Valdez, Iker, and Sawmills. And then Little River and areas west of Taylorsville, you're probably going to have another storm move right over those areas. So guys, I, I, I think the good news is we're not getting a lot of damage reports right now. But we want you to be safe because in this case, it, it could be the time of night, as Fred mentioned. Maybe we're not getting as many reports for that. But the other thing is you worry about is lack of communication. Maybe there are damage reports, but we just can't get them or people can't get them out. Um, Hunter Signs, he's up there in uh, Burke County. He's been there kind of on either side of Morganton. Uh, Hunter, where are you heading? And are you hearing of any damage reports in and around Burke County? Yeah, Brad, we are actually headed still uh, west out of Morganton. We actually just went through downtown Morganton. Uh, no reports still from, uh, no damage or flooding reports uh, from emergency management here in Burke County. I did just reach out to emergency management team out in Catawba County to see if we could get any uh, reports from earlier in the night or just if they're seeing anything there uh, so far. I haven't heard back just yet. Just minutes ago as you were kind of discussing the path of this cell and where it was heading is where I reached out. So still waiting to get uh, any kind of confirmation on anything happening out there. Right now, we are not seeing too much rain. And actually, the wind, from just looking at the treetops here going outside of Morganton, the wind has started to die down from at least where we're at. But it's sounding like, from what you're saying, Brad, is that this storm is kind of to our east, if not southeast, from at least where we are here on the west side of Morganton. Brad? Yeah, this is well east of you, so you're in good shape now. You could head back that way. I want to show you a product um, that we sometimes don't show in the air, but it's called uh, Shear Tracks. And so what I'm looking at here is I'm looking to see where shear is developed um, from the radar, where the radar thinks there was wind shear. And it's areas of blue, and it's in miles per hour. And you can see there's a little track through Morganton earlier. Um, and again, it's a one-hour track, so it plots it. You can see how those tracks have kind of shifted. And it was much stronger down to the south. You see down in uh, parts of Rutherford and McDowell County, um, we actually had a little better track down there. But all in all, um, you can see that the, 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 the shear, at least showing up on the radar, is much less than it was before. The only rotation I'm seeing right now is right here over Lake Rodas. It's essentially south of Sawmills, um, just there on Lake Rodas. Um, the wind, the reds, again, go in this direction. The greens go in this direction. So Connolly Springs Road down towards uh, Malcolm Boulevard north of Rodas Road. Um, so this is going to stay west of Hickory, which is good, good, good news. Um, you know, that's a much more highly populated area. But the North Lake side, um, that, that side of town is really close to that circuit. In fact, this is moving back into Caldwell County. Um, and so the sawmills area. What's interesting, the warning for um, Alexander and parts of Caldwell County, that storm is all the way up here. It's in Wilkes County now. So that, that one we could probably in all essence, I would forget about that one, and we need to focus on this one right here. So this is the storm that's a much bigger concern right now. It's the one last storm out there um, that's moving in. I want to look at these other storms. They're not, eh, these two storms, there's a little bit of rotation in them, but nothing like we've seen earlier. So uh, these little cells. The thing about the storms tonight, they've been tiny. Um, we sometimes refer to them as mini supercells. These aren't the monsters that we normally see in the late spring or early summer. Um, these have been really small. They're low topped. You'd notice I don't have any lightning on the map right now. It's not because I turned it off. It's just because there's no lightning um, to show out there. Debris signature, I don't see any of that on the radar as well. So all indications are these storms are rotating. They're just not producing damage near the ground. And I saw a, an amazing image earlier tonight from the upstate from exactly one of these storms when it was near Seneca. 
it did not produce a tornado, but it had this amazing rotating wall cloud. And that wall cloud was pretty spectacular, um, but it never made it to a tornado or touched the ground. And I think that might be what we're seeing with a lot of these, because the radar's seeing that rotation, but not seeing the tornado make it to the ground. I guess I'm curious about, you pointed out that area where you've got, obviously, wind coming in one direction and wind going in the other direction. How sustained are those two opposing winds, if you will. So what we do is we call it gate to gate shear. You combine those two winds. So if you've got, let's say 30 miles per hour outbound and 20 inbound, that would be a 50 mile per hour rotational wind. Um, so you combine them. And then sometimes you have to combine it with the forward motion. So if the storm's moving northeast, the east side of the storm is spinning at 20 miles per hour, but it's moving at 20, the wind on the right side would be 40. You gotta add those up, so that forward motion. So that's generally been the wind speeds I've seen. I call that EF0, EF1 type tornado winds. They're not really strong, 60, 70, 80 miles. But remember, it only takes 58 mile an hour winds to cause damage. Mm -hmm. So you think that's not a ton of wind, your roof, your trees, all that, that doesn't matter. That type of, uh, of damage or wind can cause some big time issues. Um, I think we, we brought up the camera from Lenore. Um, yeah, there's a is, lot of rain going on. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is High Brighton Mountain. So they got the, the, uh, the cross up there, which lights up the top of the mountain. And there's a couple cell towers up there. But boy, is it coming down. That is that storm um, basically right over, it looks like, um, High Brighton Mountain. And earlier you said that the rain, the flooding, even though there are n n not really a lot of damage reports, that that flooding would be a concern uh, as we move throughout the evening. Yeah, More because, so. you know, we've been talking about how, boy, these, these places have been hit by several tornado warnings. Well, even if a tornado warning didn't produce a tornado, there was still rain coming out. So they've been repeatedly hit by rain. And at night, that's the other dilemma you have. Washed out roads, trees coming down, mm -hmm. flooded roadways. Um, sometimes black pavement, when it's wet, might not just be wet, it might be water. <laughs> and so when you come upon it, it's, it's really difficult to tell if it's uh, any deeper than that. So the storm that you're seeing on the picture right now is right over High Brighton Mountain, which is just on the east side of Lenore. There it is. Um, they've whittled down the warnings, thank thankfully, to kind of consolidate them. So there's technically two warnings now, Burke and Caldwell, and then Alexander and Caldwell. Catawba's been taken out, which is good. We knew uh, we were worried about Hickory, so Hickory, stay into your west. And these are gonna be up for about another um, let's see, uh, 19, 18 minutes or so here. So we're gonna see this up for a little bit longer here, but I, I am, I'm liking the sign of all this. Um, Aaron Duncan, who's a, a great weather spotter for us, um, he is in the Valdez area. He says no damage so far at 1119, but he said it has been really strong winds. He has mm. seen some really strong winds up there. And um, that's a great report because that would confirm to me what we're seeing on the radar, strong winds, but maybe not a tornado on the ground because these wind speeds, you know, again, these are about 5,000 feet off the crown at this, at this rate. Those are 60, 70 miles an hour. Hmm. So pretty strong winds up in that area. And there's still rotation there between saw mills and uh, Petra mills. There's still pretty broad rotation. You see the red and greens um, next to each other, that's an indication of rotation on the radar. So the fact that we're still seeing that there, and then just off the map, you can see the rotation has moved up into the Wilkesboro area. It's just out of the range of the terminal Doppler radar, which is the FAA radar that Charlotte Douglas International uses for wind shear, so planes don't fly into these. Um, but you can see that storm moving from parts of Caldwell County into western Alexander County. So we're down to one storm, really, that we're watching in our area. And I kind of mentioned this earlier tonight that we weren't going to see widespread storms, but the ones that get going, we're going to, and per, I think every storm we've had, even though it's only been a handful, all of them had tornado warrants at one point mm. tonight. Yeah. It's been pretty crazy. Now you yeah. said you, oh, I'm sorry, uh, KJ. Uh, so yeah, and Brad, you know, we talked about in between warnings about how these storms have a similar setup to what we typically see with a tropical system. We're not getting, say, the hail, we're getting the low level moisture, but we're also still getting uh, the rotation. We're not getting the lighting, lightning, but we're getting enough rotation for these storms to be worn. In addition to that, many of them are producing winds that are capable of producing damage, yep. as well as the heavy rainfall. So we're dealing with potential wind damage, as well as potential flash flooding with these particular sails, uh, whether or not 
a tornado is actually touching the ground, we're still getting indication of rotation as we're seeing it right now on radar with this particular cell that's left. In the grand scheme of things, this is the one cell that's over the area right now, but of course we are keeping our eyes to the south and west. In the meantime, I do encourage people in these areas to seek shelter and stay in a safe place, but also too, it's, it's late and you wanna have multiple ways of getting a notification. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, because a lot of folks, probably many of them would have been to bed already before 11, but it's getting late. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't, you got to stay alert, especially in these areas. The areas on your screen, um, Grace Chapel, Little River, Taylorsville, and then Rocky Springs, all of those cities, you're in the path of what is still pretty significant rotation on the radar. Um, whether or not it's on the ground, uh, it's hard to tell, but the whole point of these warnings is to try to issue them before it touches down. Um, and I see we got a new warning being issued here coming up it looks like it's for uh, that's up towards the Virginia border so uh, the lines moving up towards Virginia you see up towards Mount Airy a no, new warning up there so that's outside of our viewing area uh, but this is the one warning that we're watching right now and is technically up for a little bit longer that is still a significant circulation on the radar I mean that's it, it, it warrants the warning uh, from sawmills to Granite Falls uh, to areas just south of Oak Hill and that warning is up until 1145 um, I was looking at a couple different things here in that area. Um, I know the Central um, Alexander Fire Department up there, they're, they're monitoring as well. I've not seen any reports from them either in the western part of the county. Some of the fire departments up there um, been following their Twitter feed to make sure we haven't seen any damage, have not seen any reports of damage either. But you guys, I know we're seeing still a lot of power outages, which makes sense because one of our spotters said no damage, but I'm still seeing really strong winds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of incredible to see. It's it's almost like they're, the outages are around us. Yeah. You know, so you're you're pointing out certain areas where the warnings are and we're seeing like the outages to the north and east and to the south and west. And uh, we do have this map here from Blue Ridge Energy. So we mentioned Allegheny and Wilkes are seeing um, most of the concerns in the Blue Ridge coverage area, about 1,600, still reported there. So no, no improvements since we last checked in with that map. However, we are seeing actually some improvements with the Duke Energy side of things. We had told you before, Hendersonville at one point was dealing with about 3,000 power outages. That's been whittled down to about 400. So that's looking a lot better. Um, we're still seeing some, they're gonna be reported out towards I'd say like Taylorsville, yeah. um, Wilkesboro, but um, the earlier outages we were telling you about in Hickory, those are pretty much cleared up. I think there are two that are kind of reported around the Hickory area. Um, Morganton, as we mentioned, that's cleared up. And, and so I would say, as far as being without power in our area, folks have been pretty lucky. Whatever has been uh, you know, taken out has been restored, I'd say fairly quickly. Yeah, it looks like, I think Alexander County, like you said, might be the ones with the worst power outages. And that's kind of telling because that's where that circulation moved in the northwest part of the county and a new circulation moving in there. So I'd be getting a lot of questions um, about uh, via social media about Charlotte. Hey, can I go to bed? Is it OK in Charlotte? Well, here's the thing. We're good in Charlotte now because these storms are northwest of us and moving away. If we were going to see storms we would be watching to our southwest. And if you look down here, this is where our storms would come from and they would move towards Charlotte. There's nothing down there. So that's a good sign. And because these storms are northwest and moving northeast, they're staying away from areas like uh, Statesville, Mooresville, Maiden, Lincolnton, the Lake Norman area. Uh, they're staying mainly, mainly in the Alexander County. And Alexander County right now is, is where the main action is, not only from the power outages, but where we're seeing the rotation on the radar. It's right around Little River. It's right on the county line with uh, with Caldwell County. So this is moving basically due west of I, uh, of, excuse me, I, <laughs> Highway 127 and Highway 64. Where those come together, that's where we're seeing probably some of the worst rotation on the radar. Um, so, you know, areas west of Taylorsville, more in the Ellendale area, um, heading up towards um, let's see, Three Forks Baptist Church area, uh, the Brushy Mountain Sports Park up in those areas. Um, and as you head up towards the north, you're heading towards areas like 18, which then goes up into parts of Wilkes County. So th those are the areas that I'm referring to that this is heading towards. And that was an area that was 
probably hit by the previous storm, which caused um, some of those power outages. But I was looking at the power outages, like you said, in Alexander County. Uh, they, they lead the, the pack right now in our area with like a 400 or 500, mm. um, which is pretty significant just because the population density there isn't what it is in other locations. So there's, there sounds to me like we might have had something touched down, maybe in the western part of the county up there. Yeah, and remarkable that we don't have more damage reports considering um, uh, considering how long you guys have been tracking the, the activity since about 8 o'clock this evening. Yeah, and that's that's a good thing in this case. I think the fact that we're not seeing that. Um, in this day and age, you know, one thing has changed with tracking storms over time. We usually hear about damage mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Social yeah. media, the one thing, there's a lot of negatives of social media. I'll tell you, for weather, it's been a blessing because you get instant reports. If something's on the ground or something's happening, yeah. you're going to know about it fairly quickly. And I actually use it quite a bit in our coverage because... It gives me some confidence, just like a spotter on the ground saying, hey, this is what I'm seeing. If we're not seeing my Twitter feed light up with damage or pictures, probably not seeing something on the ground just because of the, the number of people we have. So um, just to update you, we're down to one warning now. Mm -hmm. The one storm, it's the, the one that's on the Caldwell-Alexander County line near Little River. Um, ooh, first time tonight, I actually see a lightning strike there. So that's interesting because that means this storm has actually got a more vigorous updraft because you don't get lightning unless you're getting higher up in the sky. Um, higher up in the sky is where it's colder. You're producing ice. The way you get lightning, ice crystals or snowflakes rubbing against each other create static charge, which then produces the lightning strike. And there's a very close correlation with a lightning spike, we call it, and tornadoes. So when you see that jump in lightning, you know the updraft is strengthening slightly at the very least. Um, and we'll see if we see more lightning uh, come out of that. But that's a, that's a sign that that storm Really, of all the storms tonight, it's the first lightning strike I've seen. It's a positive strike as well, which means it's coming up out of the top of the storm pretty high up there. So that's our last storm in Charlotte. For the most part, we're okay. We got two little cells back in McDowell County, uh, but no signs of rotation in there at all. Uh, even looking at the radar, you see where the rotation is, and you don't even have to really be a meteorologist to see how, how that rotation is. Really, the bright yellows there really tells you a little river you know, those are some strong winds in there. Let's look at the query, show you the wind speed. So 66 mile per hour winds, that's pretty strong winds, um, even outside of rotation in that storm moving through Little River. So again, tornado warning will continue for Alexander and Caldwell County here, um, coming up here at 1145, which is going to be about nine minutes from now. So we'll see, I, I, they might extend it guys because it's still in the middle of that Horning polygon, mm -hmm. and it likely is not going to be out of it by 11:45. So don't be surprised if we see an additional warning issued for this storm. Oh, and when you say polygon, can you explain what you mean by <laughs> it? So polygon is basically it's that shape that you see the warning is um, in. You know, you probably remember warnings used to be for whole counties. Mm -hmm. Now the warnings are whittled down to more of a part of a county because of the storm. And coming up in the next couple of years, the storm warnings will be even smaller. They will literally be a storm track, kind of like the uh, hurricane cone mm -hmm. that you see for hurricanes. Yeah. We will be able to do that for uh, actual individual thunderstorms. The whole point in that is to reduce false alarm. You don't yeah. want to warn the whole county if the storm's in a small section. So the point here is to try to get down to the smallest section possible. Warn the people that need the warning and don't warn the people that don't need the warning. So uh, the polygon is that area in uh, pink it's, a, it's the shape that the Weather Service will use to issue the warnings. It's essentially a storm track, because if I show you where the rotation is, and if I were to draw a fan or a, a storm track in the future, your warnings will look just like this. It'll be for those individual cities of where the, the threat is, either hail, wind, or in this case, a tornado warning. So Bethlehem, Little River, Ellendale, Taylorsville, um, excuse me, not, not Bethlehem, Ellendale, um, west side of Taylorsville, Rocky Springs, and eventually up there towards uh, Wilkes County as it goes in, into the Wilkes part of the, the area and then exits the region. So I, it's sort of starting to tilt a little bit too towards Taylorsville. You notice that little nudge yeah, to the, the east a little bit? It is shifting a little bit to the east. Tell you what, it's that storm, even though it's the only one left, is not showing the same kind of weakening that the other storms did. It's actually still got a very strong couplet, and it's also got a little hook echo kind of signature to it. What I mean by that is this little appendage coming out the back.
that's the precipitation wrapping around the updraft as it comes in. So um, that storm is not really weakening all that much. Our Hunter signs, he's been in the, the Chevy Storm Tracker up in parts of the foothills. Hunter, where are you now and uh, where are you heading? <laughs> Yeah, Brad, we are finally heading out of Morganton onto 40, Highway 40, just to see if there's any type of damage there uh, heading towards like the Hickory area. Although that uh, warning has been lifted, I did uh, check in with Catawba County's uh, emergency management team. I'll go ahead and flip the view right now, as you can see. Here, it's pretty calm on this side of Morganton as we head towards the interstate. But Catawba County Emergency Management Team tells me that there was no reports yet of any damage. Um, she did tell me that they were monitoring it closely. I also just reached out to Alexander County's um, Emergency Management Team. I'm still waiting to hear back from them. Um, as you were mentioning, it, the tornado warning was on that line. So I went ahead and reached out to them just to see if they are hearing of any reports um, of any damage. Uh, from the wind or any type of flooding issues there. Again, I haven't heard back yet. Things are calm here in Morganton that kind of bounced around a lot of those supercells, as you had mentioned, all night. Um, so no rain. We're not seeing much debris in, in the area as far as down uh, trees or branches uh, on the streets or the sidewalks. I would say for the most part, the biggest story here in Morganton earlier in the night were the customers who lost power um, after a tree had fell on some power lines. That, though, has since been cleaned up. So right now, as you can see, leaving um, uh, Morganton, heading towards the Hickory area, uh, about to get on 40 here. But that's the latest here, and we'll send it back to you guys back in studio. All right, Hunter Signs reporting. Thank you, Hunter. Um, and as Hunter was just talking about, he saw some uh, some downed trees, or really not a lot of damage, but a lot of rain out there. What exactly is the National Weather Service going to be looking for as the sun comes up and they can assess damage and they can tell whether something touched down? Usually the first step in that process is going to be if there was damage reports um, and they'll, they'll go to the county emergency manager. They will, the emergency managers will be the first ones to go out in the county tomorrow morning, see what kind of damage they had in their county. If they find something significant, they'll probably call down to the weather service and say, hey, I think we might've had something up here and then they will send a crew up there. Um, in this kind of situation, if there was a whole bunch of damage reports, social media reports, video, they would just come up on their own, but they'll probably wait for emergency managers so, just so they can pick and choose the areas to go to because this would be a huge area to cover tomorrow because of all the warnings. And a lot of it's very you know, rural and very unpopulated, hard to get to. I mean, South Mountain State Park, Linville Gorge, wildlife area. I mean, those are some areas where it's hard to get it. People go there to get away from people. Um, so getting back in there might be aerial uh, um, surveys might be the best. Drones might be the best way to survey this. And Hunter made a good point. He said he was checking with Alexander County. Um, and I really want to focus in on there because the area I'm talking about near Ellendale, north of Little River, um, right around Ellendale Elementary School on 64, just east of Johnson's Milling and Feed, that is right where there's a very small circulation on the radar. And it's heading northeast. Um, as you go into the northern part of the county. So looks like it's going to stay on the west side of Taylorsville, but very close to H&H &H Arena, and then heading up towards um, you know, Little River Baptist Church, and then up towards areas as you go up towards the, uh, the, the Boomer area, and eventually 16 and 18 kind of come together going into um, parts of Wilkes County. That kind of area is where that storm is heading. And this is a second one to move through there. So the, the, the cities on the map that I'm pointing out, Boomer, Ellendale, um, Old uh, Gilrith and Oak Woods, those all are areas that need to seek shelter um, for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so. Our warning set to expire in two minutes, but I I'm still seeing some rotation. I'll be really curious to see what the weather service does here. I've not, I've not been chatting with them. Um, looks like they're going to let this one expire, I would imagine. I don't see any updates uh, either with that, Brad, in the weather service chat. Yeah. Also, too, with that one, if it does expire in two minutes, uh, still yet, keep your guard up and stay weather aware, at least for, like you mentioned, and that's 10 to 15 minutes minimum, especially with the type of uh, rotation that we are seeing based on a radar right now. In addition to that, we're detecting strong winds, heavy rainfall, and we still have that watch in effect until midnight. Or yeah, a tornado watch, and that'll be coming up at the top of the hour. So, 
For folks that are not in those areas, so Charlotte Metro, Southern Piedmont, we're in the clear. We're okay. You can go to bed and feel safe. Um, the areas that are of concern are going to be Alexander County. Uh, Burke and Caldwell, we're still keeping an eye on a couple additional cells back there. And maybe Northern Iredell. Those are the, those are the areas. Uh, KJ mentioned the tornado watch. Those are the counties that are under the watch. So um, that is set to expire coming up here um, at the top of the hour. And it looks like they just expired the tornado warning. Um, let me go back and make sure they cleared it out. It does look like they did. Um, no, it's still, still showing up, but I just got the notification from them that they are going to let that expire, um, which would have gone away anyways in a minute. So sometimes the system will not clear it out because it's going to expire within less than 60 seconds. So that warning is going to be allowed to expire, but let's look at the other cells. There's only a couple little showers out there. Nothing strikes me as too strong right now. We're not seeing a bunch of lightning. We'll look at this again. I'll loop this. There's the warning is gone. The only thing in effect now is that flash flood warning, um, which is in effect for Burke and Caldwell County. And as Fred mentioned, the flooding is an issue. I would be very safe traveling tonight and pre-sunrise because roads could be washed out, trees could come down. I think some of the trees we saw come down were probably just wet soil, mm -hmm. and then you had the winds, and that was enough yeah. to bring down some trees on the power lines. All right. Well, um, as we mentioned, uh, you know, Make sure that you got everything charged up. Make sure you have that app downloaded just in case you need to get anything alerted to you overnight. Uh, once again, stay up to date with the latest um, alerts on your phone. We're going to continue to kind of monitor things behind the scenes here. But once again, download that WCNC Charlotte News app. Brad, KJ, thank you so much. Um, Fred? All right. Stay safe, everyone. Good night.